We're glad to know you're still there. It's breakfast on the Plus TV Africa. And we just talked about the fact that uh, Human Rights Council of the UN, uh, all the other African countries were voted for, and almost every country uh, were, was better than us by like uh, 50, 50 times or, <laughs> or more, because we had just three votes, while others had like uh, 150 votes, 170 something, 180 something. Nigeria had three votes uh, when it came to the UN Security, UN Human Rights Council. And it's very worrisome how our image has come to be that uh, we'll be having just three votes. Now, uh, talking about ranking, we also now have Nigeria ranked fourth on the World Bank borrowers list. Even now, IMF is still talking about the fact that we might need to borrow again before we can stabilize in some quarters and all that. And this government came and said that they will not be borrowing money, but we keep seeing borrowings upon borrowings, and even some people are saying that the money for the palliatives is being borrowed. It is a worrisome thing. So now, this ranking of Nigeria as fought in the World Bank that is giving some, people's the, some people the heebie-jeebies, as they call it. Um, we have a guest that will help us uh, talk about this. He is the technology and media news editor at Business Day. Uh, he's, the, he's Mr. Frank Eleanya. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Eleanya. Thank you so much, and always a pleasure to be on the show uh, this morning. Yeah, when it came to human rights, we were ranked the last. When it came to borrowing, we are ranked fourth, fourth best, world best. <laughs> Your comments, please. <laughs> what, what, does, what does this mean to our economy and to us as a nation, being ranked the foot on the World Bank borrowers list? Okay, so um, it, it means, um, it's like you said from the beginning, uh, uh, it's a very worrisome situation, and uh, it's not also surprising, because uh, anyone who has been watching the way or the rate at which we have been borrowing money um, in recent times, we know that uh, this is ultimately going to be um, the case. And if we continue um, in this part, we will probably um, maybe make number one um, in the very, very near future. Um, it, it, it's, it says something about the profligacy of, uh, of the, the government, uh, whether it's the previous government, whether it's the current government, you know, uh, I know the current administration will say, oh, we inherited some of these uh, debts, you know, and they also made promises that they were going to uh, reduce the, the volume of debt that Nigeria has. But um, so far, it's been, over, it's been over four months now that they, were in, uh, uh, that they have been in power. I, some of us have not seen um, what or any, or any indication that um, that's a plan in place to reduce Nigeria's uh, debt profile instead. Uh, what we have seen is a uh, one ton uh, borrowing here and there. Um, you mentioned you mentioned the palliatives uh, where the states were given five billion uh, naira each for, for palliatives. You and I know how that palliative has done. I don't know if you have to your own palliatives, you know, because <laughs> every, every Nigerian was supposed to get it. You know, well, but of course, uh, many states have taken that money on loan and they haven't paid back. And of course, um, we are also seeing that uh, uh, the government has also been trying to uh, uh, um, increase the dollar supply in the market. And uh, the first um, attempt they made wasn't successful, which was uh, the $3 billion that it, they wanted to borrow from uh, African Bank. And uh, of course, they were bringing their own commitment. But, uh, um, that became an audio money. Uh, at the end of the day, we didn't get that money. But um, I, I think um, the monies that they have brought into the system were, uh, have also been borrowed. You know, um, some of them coming from the World Bank themselves. They're also releasing the um, the statistics. You know, um, we, we we also still have an approval for 1.5 billion dollars um, that the government also intends to borrow, uh, which it claims that it wants to um, put into um, small businesses. Um, to help them grow, you know. So there are other plans, you know, to also uh, um, borrow. The thing is that we are sitting on a keg of uh, of, of gunpowder, 
uh, considering the fact that our budget um, isn't even now to fund our capital projects. Um, the deficit on the budget right now has uh, risen to uh, over 100%. Uh, so what that means is that we are, uh, every money that we are making would naturally go into servicing the debt profile that we have, you, you know, but then uh, because we have uh, issues that, we, that need to be addressed, we need to continue to borrow uh, and to fund those issues. And I've said before that the government has made it easy um, with the, the, uh, the uh, uh, government uh, or the kind of team that it has recruited. Um, this is the government that has the largest number of, uh, of uh, cabinets uh, at 40, uh, presently 46 with the new uh, Minister of uh, Mining that was brought in. You know, so they have up to 46 and all of them also have gone uh, on an uh, on a recruitment spree. Um, recruiting A's here and there. Even the government, even the president himself, have even added about uh, six to twenty-four um, uh, aides to his media team, to other uh, teams that he has. You know, so all of that is part of the stock cost that we are um, incurring, and which is which hasn't helped us. If we were to go to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics um, recent uh, uh, um, release, uh, it says that. Um, Death profile has risen by 75.7% as at a quarter, uh, as a second quarter of uh, this year. And he would expect that the third quarter is going to be a lot higher than it is. Um, we're not just going from foreigners now, we're also borrowing from the banks. We are deeply indebted to Nigerian banks, you know, and uh, that's our domestic uh, um, debt profile. So uh, if you look at it from every side, um, we, we, are, we are just not. Uh, the the indices are not just favoring us, but then you 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 listen to the IMF the other day say that Nigeria's uh, debt profile is not uh, is not uh, is not too too much or it's not excessive uh, um, sort of that it can still be managed, but it will require some form of a prudence. Well, then um, there's no prudence yet in the system. That's a very big problem and. I also need to say that debt or taking loans or you know borrowing isn't isn't a, isn't a thing really. It's not. I, I mean, you can borrow to fund your business. You can borrow to you know to um to develop capital uh, um infrastructure. You know, but it um the problem we've had over the years has been the, the, what we invest our loans on. We borrow money for consumption mostly, and that is why we are where we are because. Um, the returns from consumption, you know, is zero because uh, uh, and the people that you borrowed from need you to pay them back. You know, so it's not just about borrowing; it is what are you investing the money that you're borrowing on. And so far, we have invested prudently. We haven't invested in infrastructure. Um, uh, yeah, the government is making a, uh, some noise here and there and all that, but we've heard it noise before that didn't translate to anything. You know, uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway is the same way it is, uh, uh, with halfway done, half, halfway not done. You know, so a lot of things are just going right uh, so far. Yeah, well, um, the Senate President said that, uh, because you mentioned the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, he said it's time now to work on the Lagos Abiokuta. Maybe that's uh, the next um, campaign cow that we will be seeing, because Lagos Ibadan Expressway has been there. Every government comes and talks about it and then leaves it the way it is or just don't, d does some palliatives. Now, Senate President is saying something about the Lagos Abiokuta Expressway. Let's wait and see. But now, you mentioned something that um, the rot in the system may not even be from this government. Don't you think it's high time we left other governments and concentrate on uh, the government that is now? Any government that comes, let's talk to them about what they're doing wrong. For instance, for six months, uh, the previous government, which this one took over from, which also is yes. the same party, they budgeted about uh, uh, 3.6 trillion naira for fuel subsidy to take us from January mm -hmm. to June. Now, the present government is borrowing money and is going to spend 3.27 trillion. Okay, well, they say May. Uh, federal government may spend 3.27 trillion naira on palliatives and loans. 
fuel subsidy for six months, 3.6 trillion. Palliatives for three months, 3.27 trillion. Who does that? And then tomorrow you would still say that previous governments are the ones that brought the rot upon us. Let's start to blame whoever is at the helm of affairs at that moment. Don't you think so? Yes, you're absolutely correct. So, um, you're absolutely correct. Um, looking at it, um, it's, it's been, it's been um, blame banter here and there. You know, if you bring in a new government tomorrow, they will still blame the previous one. You know, that's how the government system is wired. They don't take responsibility. They don't say, okay, I'm here now. So it is. it has become my responsibility to make things a lot better than I meant it. You know, so it, you always expect them to say, no, it wasn't me, you know, and it was the other person. And at the end of the day, the question is, what are you going to do? And it starts with what the vision that you're bringing on board. And I keep insisting, I have not seen any form of vision that this government wants to uh, um, and project to Nigerians, you know, it's a lot of uh, um, haphazard uh, um, statements here and there. We are going to do that. We're going to do that. And we're, we're, we're going to do that. We're, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. You, you're not sure exactly where they want to put their hands on. So it's, it's, it's a problem. It's a very, very big problem. Yeah, and then you mentioned um, uh, about the borrowings that they have made, you know, three point, three point. The thing is that, and I've said it before, it is about, it, they, they borrow to consume. When you are borrowing money to consume, you, it, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like borrowing money to burn it, to burn it, because there's no expectation of return. There's no expectation of return, because if you're putting money in palliatives, now you and I know that we don't have any, uh, as any, clear, any clear plan or any clear strategy that this government has for the palliatives. It, well, for them, it's about I uh, give eight thousand naira to this person, or maybe fifty thousand naira to this person, or that person, and all that. Are you giving them on the basis of a loan to return back? If you're giving them on the basis of a loan to return back, what are the modalities that they're going to return that money back? We have seen the Anchor Brewers um, um, plan that that went kaput. All, all the money that the previous um, CBN governor collected to fund that program. All of them has disappeared, so we're no longer talking about it now, and nobody's been held accountable for it. Now, here we are again. Somebody's going again for another palliative, okay? Um, we saw the trade-up money. I, I know for sure that we are yet to account for the monies that were borrowed those women or uh, that we saw on TV, all right, that got maybe 10000 15000 or 20000 or 50000 you know, but we are yet to account for how much exactly was dispensed during that program. All of those things are palliatives. This is another plan for another palliatives. Again, we are going in the same trajectory. There is no plan as to when are we going to return the money that we are about to borrow. It is a disaster waiting to happen. Okay? And also, I, I think maybe there's a, there is some kind of incentive for these politicians that when they borrow this money, um, because nobody holds them account for it um some of that money uh, of course get cornered into their pocket so for them it's like something that they always uh, um, look forward to let's give them palliatives of course we're going to steal maybe about 50 percent of it it is what has happened to the lagos Ibanan expressway i'm not a betting man but if i were to put my money on anything i would tell you that lagos Ibanan expressway would not be worked on would not be completed in the next four years because the same thing will happen to it if it is already happening, if it is already happening to uh, um, the palliatives, okay, if we, if we don't already have a plan for palliatives, how, uh, what plan do we have to complete some of these projects that has been hanging there for the past 20 years? That's where the issues are. And we just need a seismic change in, as in, in the way governance is viewed. And you cannot do that if you have the same kind of people who have been there and done the same thing all over and over again and all that. They are going to repeat the same thing. There's no way a, a leopard cannot change the spot. That's where we're finding ourselves now. So whatever it is that they're telling us about palliatives, it is absolutely not going to bring in any return. 
Somebody will say, oh, but it's going to um, give uh, some relief to the citizens. How many citizens? Do they even have the data of the citizens? We don't have a census. We don't know how many we are. People keep saying you're 200 million, 220, 210, 215, 200. Who exactly has the exact number of how many Nigerians we have? And do we have the number of Nigerians in the rural communities? Because those are the people that have been target, uh, targeted with these palliatives. Do we have accurate number of how many of, of, of these rural Nigerians, where they are, the communities where they are, as we, can we pinpoint the houses, how many houses that are there? You know, so that's how you begin to know that somebody is serious when they come to you to say, okay, we're going to give palliatives and all that. Because they've already mapped out, okay, this is where we're targeted. This is how many people we're going to uh, um, uh, um, look at. We already have their details on our system. And we know how to re return back this money. You know, and it's, uh, lastly is the fact that after they do all of this, Nigerians don't hold them accountable. So they will repeat it all of again and again and again because um, uh, um, they know that nobody's going to cry, nobody's going to protest, nobody's going to say anything, you know, because uh, as it, so it, that's why it, it keeps happening. If we have a judicial system that has, uh, um, that has the metal to um, exact or, or, or to pronounce punishment and then an executive arm that enforces the, the, those punishments, you know, people will begin to fear to do certain things in this country. But not, there's no more fear anymore in the system. There's no more fear. Anybody can just do anything. Kidnappers can just run into your house and kidnap you. They know nobody's going to pursue them. Amorabas can waylay you on the road and just collect your phone. There's no camera to hold them accountable. Even, if, even in cases where there are cameras, the police will sit on the case for like ages and nothing happens up, uh, out of it. So when you have a system like that, there is no point, you know, trying to expect so much from anything happening um, from the government side and all of that and all that. It, 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 there needs to be a proper structure. We don't have a proper structure. I don't know, but I, I've not seen any. I, you know, I, I start to be corrected, but I've not seen any proper structure from the present administration. And that, that um, is on their table. It's something that they should address urgently, quickly. And if before you start talking about palliative, start talking about data. How do we bring our, as in, um, know how many Nigerians that we have? How, how many are we? So all of that is how, it's how you know how serious these governments are, but so far I don't think they are. Okay, well, um, as we wrap up, uh, just if you have any suggestions on how to remove ourselves from the foot position uh, on the world borrowers list. You've said a lot of things uh, in the course of your talking, but for purpose of emphasis, just some bullet points, a uh, few of them, how you think Nigeria can exit that position and be in a better place. Prudence is number one. And the prudence must start from the government. It must start from them for saying we are cutting down the cost of governance. I can never say it enough. It is, it is high time we see a, um, a, um, a, a government that prioritizes saving, you know, that knows that there's something called investment in the future. We want to invest in the future. So because of that, we're going to deny ourselves some things. We're going to deny ourselves some, as in some of these luxuries. We're going to deny ourselves some of these um, high salaries. We're going to deny ourselves some of these um, um, aids that are not doing anything around us, you know? And we're going to deny ourselves um, this luxurious traveling method. I saw the other day the president's son was traveling in the presidential fleet, one of the presidential fleets. If that's what we have reduced our presidential fleets to, why do we still have it? Why do we still have it? So, um, about nine of them, you, once you pack one of them, you're spending millions on each of them. So for every day they pack, millions are going out. So why do you need all of that? I've told somebody before, look, if the president can if if the president is serious, and I recognize the fact that we are in a very dire situation, what, what he would have done is sell off all of those fleets and start using a commercial uh, uh, flight. 
take for instance, if you if you take um just for the purpose of, uh, purpose of our discussion, um, an earpiece, for instance, the president makes a case of taking earpiece wherever foreign trips that he is going to. Earpiece does not have licenses in different countries, and that's because um they don't trust the Nigerian market and all that. But if a Nigerian president can maybe uh, um start taking commercial flights like Epis or maybe in any other green green airways whatever the name is and takes them abroad all the time it will fast forward it will fast forward the rate at which our um our aviation operators um expand into other markets do you understand so you that way you're creating value for the aviation industry that way you're creating a value chain even you know, because these guys will now start increasing the, the fleets they have because the president uses them, the president ministers using uses them, you know. So there's just more market for them to do something. They have more okay. money to pay salaries. Okay. They can now recruit, you know. And it will also mean that the president will now pay more attention to the aviation industry. Do you get it? So once it, it, it has to be, it has to be deliberate. It has to be deliberate. The, the president has to be deliberate in in showing that he's a prudent person and then of course look at all of these ministries that are not doing anything he even went and created more more ministries and i'm wondering what exactly do you need them for the ministry of science and technology the ministry of communication okay the ministry of science and technology is now called ministry of science innovation and technology now there's another one called ministry of communication innovation and and digital economy you have the, all of them like that replicated, replicating different things. So you could have just brought many of them as an, or several of them together and don't, I just create departments inside those ministries. Have somebody head them. Have people head them. The, as it stands now, we don't even know if the permanent secretaries are doing the job they're supposed to be doing because there's a lot of aids everywhere running around. Okay. You go on Twitter, I am an aid for this, I am an aid for that, and all that. So those are the things that need to be done. Let's Prudence in governance. Mm. That's how you save money. Let's wrap up. Okay. Well, uh, if we begin to talk about problems of Nigeria, it it's just sparks something in our, in our minds. Thank you so much, Frank, for coming on the show this morning to share you. your thoughts. Yeah. We've been talking with uh, Frank Eleanya, um, a public affairs uh, analyst. That's how I'd like to... Uh, describe him today even though he, he works with this day news um yeah business day newspaper he is uh, the uh, technology and media news editor at business day we'll take a short break and when we return we'll go to our next hot topic which is the advice that was given to the president to go after barons responsible for bunkering stay with us